Okay, I'm recording. All right. Solution stoichiometry. Okay, we've talked about stoichiometry before. We said stoichiometry deals with the relationships between amounts of reactants and products involved in a reaction. Since most of the reactions we deal with happen in solution, you need to be familiar with the use of molarity in dealing with reactions in aqueous solution. Okay, so uh, the important thing to know as far as doing stoichiometry questions in solution is that molarity times volume can be used to calculate moles. Why? Molarity is moles per of solute per liter of solution. So if you want to solve for moles, all you have to do is multiply molarity and volume. So number of moles would be the molarity times the volume. Okay? And everything else, there's nothing new to learn here other than that's an additional way of figuring out moles. Okay? So... Let's apply that to this apply that to this problem right here. Let's consider the neutralization of sulfuric acid by sodium hydroxide. So you have sulfuric acid plus NaOH products would be this is a reaction of acid and base, so water and a salt, right? So water, okay, and the, your salt is sodium sulfate. The coefficients in your balance equation are one, two, two, and one. So here's a question. How many moles of H2SO4 will be neutralized by 25 mils of 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide? Then you use this information right here to figure out moles of sodium hydroxide. So you say moles of sodium hydroxide is molarity times volume. Okay. What's the molarity? 0 0.200 moles per liter. And what's our volume? The volume of sodium hydroxide is 25 mils. So that's 25.0. And I have to put it in liters to make my units consistent. Uh, and you have to realize a milliliter is 10 to the negative 3 liters. Okay? Milli means 10 to the negative third. So instead of right, instead of Writing milliliters, I'm going to write times 10 to the negative 3 liters. So liters cancels out. That gives me moles of sodium hydroxide. So 0 0.2 times 25 times 10 to the negative third. Um, let's see. Let me pull up a calculator. 0 0.2 times and 25 times 10 to the negative third. This is 0 0.025, right? So 0 0.025. That gives me 0 0.005. Okay. Or you can say another way of thinking about it is 0 0.2 times 25 is fifth is five, right? 5.00 three sig figs times 10 to the negative three moles. So you'll notice molarity times volume in males gives you what's known as a millimole. This is a millimole. Or you can say that's 0 0.00500 moles. Okay. Notice we're keeping the number of sig figs the same uh, when we convert from, when we adjust this number right here. So we have three sig figs. 0 0.00500 moles of sodium hydroxide so this becomes a problem that you've seen before similar to what you've seen before then you're just going to say then that if you are going to use up 0 0.00500 moles of sodium hydroxide then how much h2so4 would you use up as well you would say according to the balance equation the ratio is one is to two so you say what it will use up a mole of H2SO4 for every two moles of sodium hydroxide. So moles sodium hydroxide cancels out. So the answer in this case will be oops. The answer would be 0 
0.250 moles of H2SO4. Okay? Or you can say that's equal to 2.50 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of H2SO4. 1 is to 2. Okay? Now, uh, in one of your experiments, you'll be doing what's called a titration. And in a titration, what you do is you gradually add one reactant. So you, you just deliver one reactant from a piece of glass we're known as a burette. So this is a burette. And you add, gradually add it to another reactant in the flask. So this is your other reactant down here. Until the reactant in the flask is used up. So you've reached what's called the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio of the reactants would correspond to the mole-to-mole -mole ratio in the balance equation. So, for example, if you did that for sodium hydroxide and H2SO4, you can put sodium hydroxide from the burette and you can put sulfuric acid in the flask. Once the moles of sodium hydroxide added is twice the moles of sulfuric acid that was in the flask, you've reached what's called the equivalence point. Okay? Now, uh, the practical application for this in the lab is uh, the moles or the molarity of the reactant in the flask is usually unknown. So this is uh, what you would typically, the typical scenario you would encounter is if you have an unknown sam sample of a compound, for example, or an unknown sample of an acid, okay, uh, you put that in your flask, that's called your analyte. Okay, and your goal is to determine how much of sulfuric acid, for example, is in there. Okay, so you're doing what's called an analysis, a chemical analysis. You're trying to determine the amount of a compound, a substance, or an ion, or whatever, in a sample. So this branch of chemistry is not, uh, that specializes in doing this is known as analytical chemistry. Okay? In analytical chemistry, your goal is, first of all, what's in there? It's called qualitative analysis. Once you know what's in there, your next goal is to determine how much is in there, and that's called quantitative analysis. Okay? So the quantity of the unknown is determined in quantitative analysis. So now the thing that you add gradually from the burette is called your titrant. Okay? And typically, that's the one that's well known. You know the concentration of your titrant. So in any titration reaction, the, the, the reactant that, is, that you know uh, that has a well-known concentration is called the standard. So you're comparing the unknown to the standard. Okay? And like I said, you keep adding your titrant until you reach what's called the equivalence point. And at that point, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio of reactants is equal to the ratio of the coefficients in the balance equation. How do you know you've reached the equivalence point? Well, typical titrations are designed so that a dramatic change occurs as close to the equivalence point as possible. So when that happens, you stop the titration. You say you've reached the end point of your titration. Now, strictly speaking, the end point of the titration is not necessarily going to be the equivalence point, but it's, it's not exactly the equivalence point. But we design our experiments, uh, titration procedures, so that the end point is as close as possible to the equivalence point. So for pra practical purposes, you can say at the end point, you've reached the equivalence point. Okay? So an example that you'll... You, you, be doing in the lab would be you have a known sodium hydroxide solution you put that in your burette okay uh, and then you have a sample in your flask so your sodium hydroxide goes here you have an acid in your flask and then you, to your flask you add something called phenolphthalein it's an indicator it's an example of what's called an indicator it tells you when you've reached the end point what happens to phenolphthalein is if you react it with sodium hydroxide if in the presence of sodium hydroxide, phenolphthalein is going to turn pink. And in fact, one extra drop of sodium hydroxide beyond the, beyond the equivalence point would give you a very dark pink color. So it's a very dramatic change. You know you've reached your end point when that phenolphthalein turns pink. Okay. Now, sodium hydroxide, unfortunately, you, uh, it's... You want to use it 
to determine unknown acids. Unfortunately, you cannot prepare it uh, with very high accuracy in terms of the concentration because it's easily contaminated by water vapor and carbon dioxide when exposed to air. So you cannot reliably determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide just based on the amounts that you weighed, amounts you used to make the solution. So what you do is you, the first thing you need to do is called standardization of sodium hydroxide. In that particular case, you try to determine the, con the precise or the accurate concentration of your sodium hydroxide by comparing it against a well, a reliably known amount of acid. So that acid that we use in the standardization reaction is called KHP. Okay, the P here in KHP is not phosphorus. It's actually this thing right here. It's a polyatomic ion, C8H4O4. That's called a phthalate ion. So the P is phthalate. So K this this iron right here so khp is an example of what we would call a primary standard okay so you make a sodium hydroxide solution you don't know you know you might say okay uh, based on the amounts i use it's probably around let's say 0.5 or 0.6 molar i don't know exactly what's going to be i know maybe to one or two sig figs what the concentration is but when you're doing uh, precise work, you want to know the concentration of your sodium hydroxide to at least three or four significant digits. So in that case, you'll perform what's called a standardization titration. Okay, You react with it a well-known amount of KHP. So KHP in this case would be your standard. So the flask reactant in the flask is your standard. Your sodium hydroxide in this case would be your analyte. But once you've known your sodium hydroxide concentration, after you've standardized it, you can use it to determine the concentrations of other acids. So uh, let's illustrate that with this problem right here. Let's say you have sodium hydroxide, you standardize it against two grams of KHP. What would be the molarity of the solution if it took 15 mils of the solution to reach the endpoint? So here you have a solution of sodium hydroxide you add it to a flask containing KHP, okay? So after you've added 15 mils of sodium hydroxide, you've reached your endpoint, this solution turns pink. 